everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel, So Little Time and my name is Karen. So today's vlog is to go through my April plans with you and the makes that I made during the month of March. So as you all know, I was focusing on getting my dressmaker's ball dress made um, and that took up most of the time during March and I'm really pleased that I got it done in time. Um, and if you've not watched the dressmaker's ball vlog that I've done, that's the one previous to this. Um, and it just goes through the, the construction of the dress. Um, and then I uploaded some photos and video footage actually at the ball. So I've not spoken about the ball since I've attended. And I just want to say it was an absolutely amazing evening. I had an absolute ball, um, probably a little bit too much as I really paid for it on the Saturday. Um, I probably had maybe one too many glasses of wine but I don't get out very often so um, to be honest the, the hangover was worth it <laughs> um, yeah it was really lovely uh, so I went in to town in the taxi on my own um, and as I arrived at the city rooms in Leicester Sarah and Freya were there to greet me um, and it was lovely to see them I haven't seen them in a little while and, and Sarah especially looked absolutely gorgeous with her blooming bump um, I think her baby's due in May or June um, yeah absolutely gorgeous and then we just got escorted sort of into a side room where there was a lot of uh, the other sewers were there and you could sign up to the catwalk uh, competition so I did do that and I wasn't really sure whether to put myself down as an experienced sewer or a beginner because even though I've been sewing for 10 years really making garments for myself has only been sort of the last sort of four years so not loads but I think the category for experience though is you had to be sewing for yourself over two years so that's what I put myself down for and I really wasn't bothered as to whether I won or not I just wanted to <laughs> take part and just have the opportunity to strut my stuff and flaunt my dress off um, <laughs> and when it came around to doing that that was when the wine had kicked in so you can see on the the last photo that was taken of me flipping my dress up in the air to show the lining yeah that was <laughs> when I was um, a little bit merry shall we say but really enjoyed that and just seeing all the other sewers dresses and having the opportunity to meet and talk to the people who I follow on Instagram and watch on YouTube was absolutely amazing I didn't get to speak to everybody that I wanted to but I hope I have the opportunity at another sewing event in the future and so thank you ever so much Sarah and Freya and all the team at Crafty Sew and Sew for hosting that it's amazing really hope that you do it next year um, because afterwards I sort of came down with a real bump and I really wanted to I don't know after sort of preparing for so long um, yeah I just was like well what what do I do now so um, I just felt that because I've made such an extravagant dress and a lot of work had gone into it I just really wanted a quick and easy sew next so um, the last week of March I have sewn up this Frankie t-shirt by Tilly the Buttons from her book Stretch um, and I just used remnant fabrics, fabrics that I'd got left over from previous projects so this one was from my Blackwood cardigan and this one was from my Blackwood cardigan as well actually uh, but two di totally different type fabrics and I know that t-shirt calls for sort of a more lightweight uh, jersey more like a viscose jersey I think this isn't a ponte but it's definitely thicker than your viscose jersey this is a lot more lightweight and actually probably a bit too lightweight for the sleeves um, so I'll just move back slightly so you can see um, I've just done the three quarter length sleeves and um, I've made the size three which is what I usually make up in Tilly's patterns on a stretch pattern and it fits perfectly uh, I've got a bit of excess here but I think that's because the this fabric is quite lightweight um, and then if I just sort of stand back so you can see the length of it so it just comes down to about there um, and I like the the dipped hem on that um, next time when I make it I'm going to add maybe one and a half to two inches to the bodice length and I should have done that really from the start because I do mainly do that with Tillis patterns so um, it is sort of a standard thing that I do and I don't know why I didn't I think when I looked in the book on the picture on the model um, it looked quite long so I thought oh it should be okay but no it's not as long as I'd like it I'd like it just a little bit longer um, yeah, so that was a make that I wasn't really planning, but I just fancied doing something really quick and easy. So I'm really happy with it. I'm not 100% sure if this sort of neckline suits me. It's quite high. And that's one of the reasons I haven't made the frayer yet, because I don't know if that collar will suit me. I've got quite a small head. Um, so a lot of people call me pea head. <laughs> um, 
So yeah, so sometimes it accentuates the fact that my head is quite small and then makes me look like a uni boob. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Jury's out on that one, but I do, I do like the raglan sleeves on it and it's definitely a top I'd, I'm gonna make again, but in different fabrics. So this one I probably won't wear as much because I have been pulling it down quite a bit, I've been finding, uh, because it's not as long as I'd like. So it just either go to the, the fabric uh, charity bin or it will go to I don't know, the charity shop or just to be worn dossing about the house really, that kind of thing. Um, so then the next thing I made was the dragon outfit for my son for World Book Day. Um, and as I sort of thought, yes, I was up till like 11 o'clock the night before hand stitching these spots on because what I'd done was use the um, Rowan T pattern for the hoodie and then I made a separate tail that he could take on and off um, and it all came together fine now I cut out the age five initially um, and then when I cut it out in the, fle in the green fleece I thought oh I don't think it's going to be big enough it just looked really small and I think because the fleece hasn't got as much as give as a standard jersey um, I was just a bit worried that yeah it wasn't going to fit so I then recut age seven and held it up against him the next morning and that looked like it was going to, to fit a lot better. So I've made it up um, and I've made it all together and then realised that I should have stitched the spots on uh, before I constructed the garment together basically. So I ended up hand stitching all these spots on which took me forever, that's what kept me up. Um, so on this pattern then it has two seam lines down the hood where you can add a stripe, but I've just used the same colour. And then I made these spikes and put those in the seam line. So down the back of the hood, it's got, yeah, the spikes. And then the spots I've just hand stitched on either side. Um, and then on the back bodice, I added a seam allowance of one and a half centimetres and put a back seam in. So I cut it in half and that enabled me to put the spikes down the back. And then I just hand sewed these spots on again. So I add the ribbing on for the cuffs and the waistband and then on the front I just used the felt to um, put I don't know like a, a belly thing on um, and then put some green spots on there and again hand sew those on and I, I managed to to machine stitch that purple section on because I was able to get that over the um, the throat of my sewing machine. So that's the age seven in a fleece and he's five so that fits him in a fleece really well. I didn't line the hood, I didn't have time, I just wanted to um, do a really basic one and he was just absolutely over the moon with this um, outfit. So that really made the extra effort worth it. Now this is the, um, <laughs> the tail. So it's got this, um, I added some poppers because initially I just put, I put four poppers on initially so he could have it like that. But then when I tried it on him, it was a little bit loose. So I added another two, so it just moves it over. So as he grows, it can move them along. Um, yeah, and this was really easy to make. I used a tutorial on YouTube, so I'll, I'll link those details in the description box below. And then I just added the, uh, yeah, the spikes in, in there. So really pleased with how that turned out and just used toy stuff in to stuff it. Um, he absolutely loved wearing it. I think the only thing was a few of the other children were pulling on his tail a little bit. And he said, oh, I took it off in the end because everybody was pulling my tail. And I said, oh, that's because they thought it was really fun. Um, but then he lived in this for like two weeks <laughs> afterwards. I couldn't get it off him to wash it. So it has been in the wash and I didn't pre-wash the fabric. So I was a little bit worried that it was going to shrink, but it, it hasn't. It stayed absolutely fine. So, yeah, he was over the moon with that. And, yeah, I just felt great making that for him because I think he was the only one who had a handmade outfit for that day everybody else had bought it so I just felt really smug <laughs> um okay so then uh the other thing that I made was a pom-pom garland for my Easter decoration so I'll just grab that um and I used the clover pom-pom maker and you can see here I've just threaded one strand of uh wool through the pom-poms um, so they're not knotted or anything and I just knotted a bit at the end because I've got some on my dado rail downstairs in the front room it's got some little nails that I just hook it up on uh, so I'll insert a photo of um, it hanging up so you can see but yeah it's um yeah really really pleased with that oh, that's all tangled now 
Um, but yeah, I've made quite a, a lot. So uh, it goes across one length of the, the room. Um, I'll also insert some photos and video footage of my son wearing his um, dragon outfit, just so you can see it in action. <laughs> Turn around. Uh, yeah, and I think that was the only things that I made. Oh no, I did make one more thing during March and that was a little um, gathered skirt for a little girl that my boy goes to school with. It was a birthday party. Well, it's her birthday and I'd forgotten about it, turned the calendar over and I thought, ah, I haven't got anything for her. So I literally just whizzed one up the night before the party and I used the reverse fabric to that... Um, duvet cover that I bought to make the toile for my dress um, and that's got dragonflies on the other side in like white with a grey background so I'll insert a photo of that because obviously I've not got it here to show you because um, she's now got it so hopefully it's, it fitted okay I went sort of on my son's waist size because I thought well they're all pretty similar now um, and the, the length as well so it, it turned out really well it only took me an hour at the most to do um, yeah, so hopefully she likes that. But I did put a little label in saying handmade so they could see that it wasn't a shop bought one. Um, okay, so that was all the things that I really made during the month of um, March then. If, if you've not seen my dressmaker's ball dress, just go on to the other video. Um, yeah, and I, I managed to keep it in pretty much pristine condition throughout the evening. Um, I felt great in it I have to say I just felt a million dollars in it you know and it was amazing and surreal to be in a room full of all people that had made their own dresses um, so I've got quite a lot of plans for April and I'm really hoping that I'm going to get all these done because I want to play catch up a little bit so I can get a lot of these things made um, and now one of them will be ticking off one of my mate nines the first one off my mate nine list for this year um, so firstly, I want to make the um, Rowan T hoodie again. So this is the pattern here. Um, I'd like to make that for my three boys. So um, the, with the fabrics that I got from um, Lubidoo Fabrics, I won for doing that um, where I just did an Instagram sort of competition where you tagged somebody that inspired you and I tagged Amanda I sew a lot and um, so she got two fabrics as well from there um, and I chose this shark one and uh, this motorbike moped one um, so I'm going to make those into the Rowan tees um, I'm hoping I can get three out of all of these we'll see how I go but I have got a bit of this remnant fabric left uh, from Guthrie and Garney which I could always use for the sleeves or something on one of them um, so that's my first sort of plans for April. Um, need to do the Clio pinafore dress for my friend Anna. 100% need to get that done this month. Um, got the fabric, it's been pre-washed. Got the lining fabric, which you've seen in my previous vlog. Um, so that's what I just need to get the dungaree buckles. I've got some in brass, but I want to get um, silver because I think it'd go better with grey. Um, and then I bought this fabric, which was from the remnant bin in Guthrie and Garney. So navy and white, uh, I think it's a loop back jersey uh, from Guthrie and Garney. And uh, I was going to do a Tinny and the Buttons cocoa top, um, but I thought, no, I've got loads of those. So let's move on to a different pattern. So this is the one that I'm going to tick off my mate nine. And it's the Soho House 7 toaster sweater. Now I've made the version one, so I'm going to do version two. Um, and I think that would work really nicely in this stripe. And I've seen a few on Instagram, so I'm definitely um, going to do that. Now, I'm not 100% sure what size to go with. Now, with the version one, I made a size medium. And that was quite snug around my hips because I lengthened the pattern. Um, with this one on the version two, I am going to lengthen it again. I'm going to lengthen it by two inches um, because I think the front of it does sit quite high. And I just don't like showing off that area. Um, but the measurements, the finished garment measurements are much bigger than the version one. So I might do a size small rather than a medium. I'm going to um, sort of 
trace off the pattern and hold it up to me and just sort of gauge it from there. So hopefully I'll get that right because I haven't really got any fabric to twirl it with. Um, oh, and I hate making twirls, to be honest. Just a waste of, not a waste of time, but you know, takes up time. Um, so that's that one. And then I'm doing actually a Tilly in the Buttons cocoa dress and a top out of this fabric which I can't remember where I got it from now, um, but I took inspiration from Rachel from the French scenes on Instagram. Um, she's made this in a cocoa top uh, with long sleeves and I'm gonna basically copy that for me and I'm doing the dress version with three quarter length sleeves um, because I had enough to do both. Um, so that's that one, another quick make, that's actually cut out all ready to go. Um, and then I got this fabric. Now, I can't remember where I got this from either. I should have looked up, but I'll link this, where I got this from down below. It's this lovely um, viscose mustard background with like, lovely fl florally pink flowers on. And I'm gonna make that into an Ogden cami. Um, I've only got a metre of that. Um, yeah, so the Ogden cami for that one. Um, and I have also bought some more, uh, another metre of fabric to make an Ogden cami, but I can't show it you because it's in the wash as we speak. Um, and then I'm going to make the Blackwood cardigan, the long version again, no pockets or anything. Um, and I'm going to use the mustard um, sort of jersey fabric that I got from Guthrie and Garney. And I'm going to do the exact same changes that I made to my previous ones, and that's by taking some of the length of the hem band. Um, I can't remember how much I took off it now, um, but I'll write that down in the description box below. Um, and also I'm going to make the Colette Manetta um, in the version two. So three quarter length sleeves, uh, same as I've made before using this fabric that I got from Satisfaction. And this one's called Peace Flowers, I think. Um, and I won this in the one week, one pattern. Um, spot prize so um i've checked and it has got a four-way stretch it is a bit thicker than the one that i've previously made so i might add just a little bit of length onto the bodice just to make sure that it sits in the right place i can always take it off if if i don't need it um yeah and i'm also i always get problems with under the arms being too baggy and um, I have to take it in sort of down here and quite a bit down there. It's, there's you usually get loads of excess with this pattern. So what I'm considering doing is sort of using the Agnes pattern by tinning the buttons to get the arm shape right because I haven't made the changes to the pattern. Um, so I need to do that. And when you've made up a garment, sometimes it's not easy to, um, to make the changes to the pattern piece. So I'm going to uh, try and use the Agnes. I don't want to make the Agnes top version of it. I know a lot of people do that as a hack, use the Agnes top with the sort of the Minetta skirt, but I don't want to do that because I do quite like the neckline on the Minetta. And I, I will add a neck band to it. Um, I just like the length of where it, uh, you know, where it sits, um, even though I usually wear it back to front. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, that's what that is. So that's, I think the majority of my plans for April. So we've got the Blackwood cardigan, the Minetta dress, the uh, Coco dress, Coco top, um, the version two of the toaster sweater, the um, Ogden cami and the Rowan tees plus the Cleo dress. So that's quite a lot <laughs> and I still want to do a sort of egg tree ready for Easter as well. So I'm going to start cracking on with these. It's the 3rd of April today so I'm going to start getting some of these done. Some of them are quite easy and quick, so hopefully I'll be able to get all these done. Oh, and also my friend Anna, she wants me to do some pillowcases for her as well, but again, if I don't get those done this month, then I can just roll that over. Yes, so that's all I wanted to go through with you today. Uh, thank you ever so much for watching. Hello to all my new subscribers again. Thank you ever so much for all the wonderful comments that I've had on my past few video videos. Really, really appreciate it. I love reading them and I have been answering you um, because I like to get around to answering everybody. So I did put a picture on my Instagram, just a snapshot of my channel to show that I'd gone to 700 subscribers, which is amazing. And I have promised that I'm gonna do a giveaway when I get to a thousand subscribers, which I know is quite common with uh, YouTube vloggers, they do do that. Um, 
so when I get to sort of that um, nearer to a thousand or when I reach a thousand, I'll come on here and I'll tell you what I'd like you to do to uh, be part of the giveaway. I ha I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to give away yet. It probably be, might be some fabric or um, a pattern or something like that, but I will ask you a question that I want you to answer in the description box below so I can put everybody's names into a random generator thing. Um, Yes, so I'm going to do that. So I shall see you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.